Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude Running. We're up here in the studio, and today we're going to be talking all things trail shoes. Now, trail is a growing category. It's massive here in Australia. It's huge all over the world, especially in Europe and North America. And the brands know that. The brands are making more and more trail shoes every single season, and they're making more and more advancements within their trail shoe technologies. In today's discussion, we're going to talk about what actually makes a trail shoe, so the upper, the midsole, and the outsole, how it differs to that of a road shoe. We're also going to give you a bit of an idea of how we categorize the trail market. So there is a number of things that we consider when we actually put a trail shoe on someone's foot. We want to make sure it's fit for purpose, so we ask a lot of questions, of course, but there are so many different categories, so many different engineering features, so that brands can actually get the majority of the market covered. That's obviously their aim. So there's a lot to get through in today's review. Go make yourself a cup of tea or a coffee, sit down and let's get stuck in. Before we jump into the whole trail range or categorizing the trail range, let's talk about the variances between trail and road. Nova Blast here from ASICS for a road option and we have the Speed Cross here from Salomon for your trail consideration. First things first, let's talk about the upper. With trail shoes, the main difference is you've got a bit more protection up top and that's across the three main areas. Toe box, so you have a harder material at the front to protect your toes in comparison to what you have with a road shoe which is very light and rather breathable through that toe box. Through the midsection of the shoe, you'll find the saddle to be fit pretty similar in, um, in, in due respect to both categories. However, there's more overlays with your trail shoes. On the medial side, you'll have a little bit more of a wrap and also the lateral side to keep that foot nice and stable. Again, road shoes have some form of construction through the midfoot, but not a, quite as dialed in as your trail shoes. Heel count is pretty similar. Obviously, the heel counter plays an important part in keeping the overall foot nice and stable. Both have internal heel counters. In some cases, you'll find with trail shoes, they'll either um, lift the back of the shoe up to give more protection or they'll have another construction around the back of the heel counter to keep it nice and stable. The other notable thing um, to consider is that road shoes are very, very light, very, very breathable. And with your trail shoes, they're still breathable, but there's a little bit more configuration in the upper to keep the foot nice and protected and as dry as it possibly can. Next thing to talk about with trail shoes versus road shoes is the outsole. So this is where trail shoes are vastly different than your road shoes. You can see with a road shoe, more often than not, there's a generally speaking, there's a less rubber on the bottom because there's not a lot to consider. I mean, obviously protecting the shoe on those bitumen pavement surfaces to avoid friction and unnecessary wear, brands will use their appropriate rubber to protect the asset being the midsole. When it comes to trail though, we are going to be going up, down, sideways, skipping, jumping, landing on rocks, sticks and twigs. So we need to have the outsole doing all it possibly can to keep that foot and the body nice and balanced across a myriad of different surfaces. So you can see here with the speed cross, there are large lugs now, not all trail shoes are like this, but this is calling out probably one of the most aggressive in regards to grip. So you've got different lugs placed across the whole outsole, being the heel, the midfoot, and the forefoot to give you as much grip as you possibly can to gain control on those you could say unstable surfaces. So with trail, we know we're going to be going through mud. We know we're going to be on some hard sort of fire tracks from time to time too. And we're going to be stepping on things that could protrude through the shoe. So the outsole is so important to keep that foot nice and protected and comfortable and stable on those trail surfaces. The next thing to talk about is the midsole. Now, there's not a lot of variance between a road and a trail shoe with midsoles. The properties are pretty similar. So brands are within their categories trying to achieve the optimal outcome of performance and fit and function with their midsoles. Same thing goes with trail shoes um, as well. So the main difference between them is that you'll find with trail shoes is that that, that traditional guidance slash posting construction you find with some road shoes, not the Nova Blast, where brands will inject some form of support on the medial side to keep the foot from over pronating or slowing the rate of pronation down. We don't see that with trail shoes in today's market. The main reason being is there's so much inconsistency with your foot placement on trail surfaces, so it's very hard to dial in the appropriate amount of arch support on the medial side. The other thing to consider as well is brands sometimes will use some form of either TPU construction within the midsole. They call it a rock shield plate. Brooks Cascadia is a perfect example of that. They've used a rock shield plate within their midsole for a number of years now. Now brands, again, can achieve rock shield plates with good outsoles, but some brands will call it out and they'll let us know if they have ever so slightly changed the midsole with that technology as well. Okay, guys, let's jump in to today's broad review of the trail market. So first things first, we categorize the trail shoes into the following. We have max stacked trail shoes. We have cushioned trail shoes. We have what we call balanced trail shoes. We have responsive 
and connected. So that makes up the five main categories of trail, but we also have what we call ATR, which is all-terrain running, um, which is another consideration, which is, makes up the sixth category of trail shoes. Now, if you're coming into the trail market, more often than not, you've had a road shoe. So what we usually do is downstairs, if someone's buying their first trail shoe, we like to, them to we'll encourage them to bring in their favorite road running shoe because then we can line up where they've come from from road and put them into the right or most appropriate category for them in the trail market. Now, that's obviously considering the, tr the road shoe has been successful and, and been very comfortable. We would line them up into the right category and then we move forward. So in today's review, we're going to touch on um, a couple of examples in each category, call out the actual engineering features which we consider which puts them within that category and yep answer all the questions that hopefully you have at home with regards to trail shoe selection so let's get stuck in okay let's talk all things max stack so on the table in front of me here i have got the new balance more trail and i've also got the asics tribuco max a couple of other shoes in this category to consider would be the hocker stinson and also the ultra olympus both of those shoes, all four of those shoes I have discussed right here, are what we classify as max stacked. There's a lot of foam or a lot of shoe underneath the foot, so what you're going to get with that is you're going to get a lot of cushioning, a lot of plushness, for want of a better term, underneath the foot for your foot placement. But the other um, trade-off there is you don't have the most connected feel with the ground, so you, you lose a little bit of that proprioception with regards to your foot placement. Now, that can be a good thing for some people um, with regards to the overall cushioning experience. However, there are a lot of trail runners out there or some portion of trail runners that want to feel the ground, want to know where their ground uh, connection is. And we'll go through some other options later in this review. Now, obviously with this category, um, we are putting people inside these shoes for the first time if they're coming from the road and they're running in shoes like your Hocker Bondi, you'd almost say your Endorphin Shift from Socony as well. And another one might be the Asics Glide Ride, for just to name a few. Now, coming from that into this category, you like that roll on the, and that ride on the road, you'll more than likely probably feel pretty comfortable with what this has to offer here for your trail options. Okay, the next category we're going to be speaking to today is our cushion category. Now, there might be a little bit of confusion here from max stack to cushioned and what we classify as balanced cushioned because a lot of the issues we're talking about right now, the marketing message from the brands will be in and around cushioning and comfort. So it can be confusing for you, the trail runner, so hence we're doing this review today. But in front of me, I've got the Endorphin um, Edge here from Socony. I've got the Speed Gut here from Hocker. Another couple of others to consider in this category are the Ultra Temp, the New Balance Hiero, and the Salomon Glide Max, just to name a few. Now, the Salomon Glide Max is their most cushioned trail shoe. So in theory, you would think that'd be in the Max Cushion category, the one we just spoke about previously. However, it is not. It competes more so with these options we're talking to today. So you will find with this category being cushioned, it's going to be soft underneath the foot. You're going to get plenty of protection underneath the body so when you're hitting those trails and you want to make sure that you're getting all the cushioning you require you're certainly going to find it within this cushion category if you're coming from the road to trail and you like that category we're talking shoes like your Clifton um, from Hoka your New Balance 1080 and probably your Gel Nimbus from ASICS I mean all of those are cushioned shoes for your roads and they translate into what we're talking about through here for your trail running Okay, guys, next category of trail shoes is the balance category. Now, the balance category for us makes up the most market share with regards to our trail offering. Now, in this category, we have um, a few things to consider. We're getting cushioning underneath the foot. We're also getting stable ride and also a little bit of response through toe-off. So it does sort of tick most boxes. A little bit like your road shoes in this category, your Brooks Ghost, your 880 from New Balance, and your Gel Cumulus from ASIC. So... All of them have elements of cushioning and all of them have elements of response through the forefoot. So while we're touching on that, if someone's coming to us and looking for their first trail shoe, we'll probably start off in this category and then we can either go more cushioned or we can go more responsive. It's the perfect halfway shoe to find out what someone does and does not like within their trail shoes. So as I touched on, Brooks Cascadia, On Running Cloud Ultra through here and a couple of others to consider are the Socony Peregrine and also the ASICS Gel Tribuco. The next category of trail shoes we're going to talk to today is the responsive category. So we've got a couple of shoes here in front of us. I've got the Nike Terra Kiger and also the speed cross here from Salomon, which was part of our intro today. Now, responsive, 
pretty self-explanatory. You're not going to get a whole heap of cushioning. We'll both have got a little bit underneath the foot, but it's more about what you feel on release out of your gait cycle. So both of these shoes here have a pretty snappy feel. If you're talking about other trail shoes we're looking at, we're talking the Brooks Catamount from the Brooks Running Family. Road shoes to consider in this category are your Brooks Launch and your Hoka Mark. So they don't make up a, var or a whole heap of numbers within both trail and road categories. A lot of this discussion for us when we're talking road is it might be a shoe rotation discussion we want something a little bit lighter more responsive for your shorter runs now not a lot of people out there have the luxury of having two or three trail shoes on the go so what we tend to find is the person who's going to be looking at this category could potentially be the more experienced trail runner someone that may not be running an ultra 50 100 100 plus kilometer events but someone that is pretty confident pretty stable and has a relatively efficient gait and may want to run a little bit quicker on those trail surfaces and to engage a midsole to get that responsive feel um, the responsive category as i touched on uh, a minute ago just to be clear not overly cushioned there's an element of cushioning there but it's more about the stability and release out of your gait cycle the next category of trail shoes we're going to talk to you about is the connected category. So, like the name suggests, we are as connected to that trail surface as we could possibly get. Vivo Primus Trail, not a lot between your foot and that trail surface. All we have is a really um, grippy slash traction outsole here from the trail shoe. So you're going to get a really good connected feel with the ground. You're going to know exactly what's going on underneath your body. The other thing um, here, or the other shoe, part of me, is the Ultra Mont Blanc. A very popular, very well-received trail racing shoe all around the, uh, the world. This shoe here is a little bit more cushioned. You can see there is obviously a foam piece or the Ego Max cushion in construction which is going to give the body a little bit more protection however being zero drop is remained very close and very connected to the ground the other thing with this category too you'll find that the toe boxes are a little bit more generous as well so when you are on a zero drop or a very close to the ground feel that barefoot element you want to be able to splay your forefoot and you can do exactly that with both of these shoes so you remain connected remain balanced and your foot can splay and disp disperse all the shock through that forefoot as it possibly can couple of other road shoes to consider or throw into this category. No surprises, the Vivo family. So your Vivo Primus is another prime example of what you could consider from road to trail. The Ultra Escalante family, again, pretty similar characteristics to this Mont Blanc. So again, that easy transition from road to trail, you have both options covered, which is fantastic. Last but certainly not least, let's talk to you about the all-terrain running or the hybrid category. So as the name would suggest, this category of shoes are designed to go both on a bitumen and pavement and also hit the trails and go off-road. So with that in mind, the characteristics with this category of shoes are so similar to your road versions. However, there's a couple of alterations. So I've got the Challenger here from Hoka and the Wave Rider um, here from Mizuno. So the Challenger is built off of the Clifton Engineering and the Rider, as it would suggest, is coming from the Rider um, road running shoe from Mizuno. The only real difference is you've got some element of traction stability underneath the shoe itself. So as I touched on, this shoe here needs to be able to hold up on bitumen and pavement and also give you some confidence and stability when you head off road. So the outsole is to be um, engineered or, or configured to give you confidence on both surfaces. The midsole is very, very similar and the upper, well, in the Challenger, it's slightly more refined. It's very, very similar to what you get out of your Clifton. And the Wave Rider Gore-Tex, well, the Gore-Tex is in the upper, so a waterproof construction. A little bit like the Ghost Gore-Tex um, from Brooks. So what we have with this shoe here is the upper, while it is Gore-Tex, it is very popular and it's probably more popular for your trail walkers. There are a portion of trail runners out there that do like Gore-Tex uppers and that is absolutely fine. How we tend to find with the Gore-Tex constructions, it's targeting more the walkers. They're going to be easing themselves through long grass, shallow creek beds or shallow puddles. Because when you're trail running, your foot does get a little bit hotter and it will get warmer inside a Gore-Tex upper than it would a water-resistant upper from most of your other trail categories. And the other thing to consider with Gore-Tex trail shoes is if the water gets in the top, it can't get out and it does just slosh around and the moisture gets absorbed inside your socks so it does become rather uncomfortable another shoe to consider in this category is the nike pegasus trail very popular shoe here at sportitude running and all across the world for that matter a shoe that's comfortable on road and it gives you some element of protection as you hit the trails as well this category is for someone literally doing a 50 50 or a 55 45 split between trail and road and hasn't really committed to one surface over the other so it really does help uh, or 
cater for both uh, for both markets as well, which is fantastic. Okay, before we finalise today's discussion on trail shoes, the biggest question we get asked if someone's transitioning from a road shoe to a trail shoe and their road shoe happens to be something with some arch support. So they walk in and they say, I've been using an ASICS Gel Kayano or I've been using an 860 from New Balance or a Brooks Adrenaline to give you some context and I want to get myself into a trail shoe. So as I said on the intro, there's literally no medial support within trail shoes anymore. There used to be, but however, how this category has progressed into what we see now in 2023, arch support isn't really a requirement within the medial side of these shoes. Now, arch support is a loose term. I want to make it really, really clear. There is arch support within these shoes, but there is no medial structured support. So medial support is offering an element of pronation stability for someone who's looking to reduce the range of movement or slow down that rate of pronation. Arch support does exist with all trail shoes, but it doesn't in the way of dual density posting. So as I touched on, someone's walked in off the street and we are an overpronator. We've been using Kayanos or 860s and we're gonna find ourselves a trail shoe. First thing we look at is something with a broader surface area. Speed Goat, fantastic example, great footprint. And you have the Brooks Cascadia here as well from uh, Brooks, obviously. You can see both are nice and broad through the heel, nice and stable through midfoot, and obviously have a slightly wider forefoot construction as well. That's great. And as I touched on and during this review, the balance category and the cushion category tends to be where most of our people will fall into if they're looking for their first trail shoe. We'll start off there and we can go either more cushioned or more responsive, but it's a great starting point for us. And I do have the more trail here as well. While it is max stacked and of course, you need to be in tune with that amount of cushioning or midsole underneath your body for you to even consider this category. However, when you're coming from, say, an Arahi from Hoka and you're looking for a trail shoe, well, we might start here at the um, more trail or the Stinson from Hoka, for example. So as you can see, nice broad footprint, a lot of surface area, so your foot's going to get a nice stable transition through the whole gait cycle. Now, as I touched on at the intro, and I want you to make it clear, if you're overpronating, that is perfectly normal and that's a OK on the trail surface because the continuity with your foot placement is quite different every single time your foot makes contact with the ground. When we're running downhill, we tend to overstride when we're running uphill, we have a shorter cadence and obviously we're stepping over bits and pieces on the trail surface. So not every foot placement is the same as the other or not quite as consistent as you would find on the road and pavement surfaces. Okay, guys, that review was a little bit longer than anticipated. So I think it's important though because we need to really cover the whole entire range, the categories from your max cushion right through to all terrain and everything in between. It's vitally important for you if you're considering a trail shoe to start at the right spot and a lot of it has to do with where you're coming from with your road shoes or for that matter, if you're coming from another trail shoe and you want a little bit more or a little bit less, well, at least this is giving you some information at home to potentially start you on your trail running shoe selection journey. Now, guys, we love hearing from you all around the world with all things running, whether it be road or trail. Let us know your favorite trail shoes if you're a trail fan out there. If you're having some troubles finding the most appropriate trail shoe, we are here to help. Drop us a comment in the section below and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. And in regards to the trail category, it is growing. We love servicing you, the trail community. So keep it up, get out there, smash those trails, chase those adventures, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Stay safe, be kind to one another. We'll see you out in the trails.